Ever wondered why your computer processor needs another type of memory called cache memory? Just like how you would keep a frequently read book at home for quick access, rather than making a trip to the library each time, your computer processor does something similar. It has a special memory known as cache memory right inside the CPU. This memory acts as a small, convenient storage space for data values that are used often. The reason for this? Well, it's all about speed and efficiency. You see, cache memory is physically closer to the CPU, making data access faster. But there's a catch. Cache memory is small and comes at a higher cost. So, it's like having a mini library at home. You can't possibly store all the books, but you keep the ones you use the most. So, cache memory, in essence, is a small, expensive space that stores your most frequently used books or data, improving the speed and efficiency of your computer. So why do we really need cache memory? Isn't the main memory or RAM enough? Let's dive into this. Imagine a principle known as the law of the long tail. This law, typically applied in business administration and economics, also finds relevance in the world of computers. It implies that a small chunk of data, say around 20%, is frequently used and thus accounts for approximately 80% of all data requests. Fascinating, isn't it? Now, if we smartly store this frequently used 20% of data in the cache, we can significantly boost the performance of our system. It's like keeping your favorite books on your bedside table for easy access, rather than having to walk to the library every time you want to read them. However, there's a catch. Cache memory, although faster and closer to the CPU, is expensive. It's like paying a premium for a house in the city center. To deal with this cost factor, cache memory is divided into various levels. L1, L2, and L3, each differing in performance and price. The L1 cache, being the closest to the CPU, is the fastest but has the smallest capacity. It's like the wallet in your pocket, handy and quick to access but it can't hold all your savings. The L2 and L3 caches, on the other hand, are like your bank accounts. They might be a bit further away, and transactions may take a little longer but they can store much more. In essence, cache memory is a clever compromise between speed, capacity, and cost. It's a strategy that allows us to have our cake and eat it too, by maintaining a balance between cost and performance. So by using cache memory, we're essentially playing a smart game of economics, balancing cost with significant performance improvement. It's like turning your computer into a savvy business person, always ready to make the most out of resources. And who wouldn't want that? Cache memory isn't just a single entity, it's divided into three levels, L1, L2, and L3. But what does each level mean? Let's dive in and break down this layered structure to better understand what each level represents and how it contributes to the overall performance of your computer. Starting off with the L1 cache, also known as level 1 cache. This cache is the closest to the CPU core and is directly connected to it. This proximity results in it being the fastest in terms of speed, but it comes with a downside its capacity is relatively small. The L1 cache is further divided into two parts, the data cache and the instruction cache. The data cache is responsible for storing data that the CPU might use, while the instruction cache holds the instructions that the CPU is set to execute. It's like having a small notebook right by your side where you jot down the things you need immediately. Moving on to the L2 cache or level 2 cache. This cache is located between the L1 cache and the main memory, also known as RAM. Compared to the L1 cache, the L2 cache is a bit slower, but it compensates for this with a larger capacity. The L2 cache can be shared by multiple CPU cores and is primarily used as a data cache. However, it can also function as an instruction cache when needed. In the analogy of books, the L2 cache is akin to a personal bookshelf, not as immediate as your notebook, but still within easy reach. Finally, we have the L3 cache or level three cache. This cache is situated between the L2 cache and the main memory. It has an even larger capacity than the L2 cache, but is slower in comparison. Much like the L2 cache, the L3 cache can be shared among multiple CPU cores. Its primary function is to act as a shared cache for all cores in the system. To continue with our book analogy, the L3 cache would be the local library. A bit further away, but home to a vast collection of books. So why do we have these three levels? Why not just have one big cache? Well, this multi-level structure of cache memory plays a crucial role in improving CPU performance and optimizing overall system performance. By reducing the number of data transfers to and from memory, 
it increases the speed at which the CPU can access the data it needs. The L1 cache provides the CPU with the most frequently needed data as quickly as possible, while the L2 and L3 caches handle less frequently accessed data but in larger volumes. But remember, this concept doesn't just apply to your personal computer, it can also be extended to servers. Imagine if every time you needed to load data, you had to call the server. This would make the server very busy and slow down your access speed. To avoid this, frequently used data is stored locally or in a cache server, while less frequently used data is stored on the server. So each level of cache memory has a unique role to play, working together to optimize your system's performance. It's a delicate balance, but when done right, it allows your computer to operate swiftly and efficiently. Like everything else in life, using cache memory also involves a trade-off. So what's the catch here? Cache memory usage presents us with a classic conundrum of balancing between cost and performance. The more cache memory a chip has, the higher the price tag it carries. So it's essentially a question of whether we're willing to pay more for better performance, but it doesn't stop there. There's also a spatial consideration to factor in. The physical space within a CPU is finite, so we must decide what to prioritize. Should we increase the calculation circuit or the memory? It's a bit like deciding whether to use your limited backpack space for an extra sweater or a map on a hiking trip. Each choice has its benefits and drawbacks, and the correct decision often depends on the specific situation or objective. Now let's add another layer to this. As technology advances, cache memory's role has been expanding, especially since the breakdown of Moore's Law. For those unfamiliar, Moore's Law states that the number of transistors on a microchip will double approximately every two years which has traditionally led to an increase in computing power. But as we get closer to the physical limits of miniaturization, this law is breaking down. So what does this mean for cache memory? Well, as the density of transistors can't keep growing indefinitely, the role of cache memory becomes even more vital. It's like a buffer, bridging the gap between the CPU speed and the slower main memory. This shift has made the trade-offs associated with cache memory even more critical. Ultimately, the use of cache memory is a balancing act. It's about making the right choices based on specific needs and constraints, whether it's cost, performance, or space. It's a complex yet intriguing aspect of computing that continues to evolve and challenge our understanding. So, while cache memory brings significant advantages, it also presents us with some tough choices, making it a fascinating aspect of our computing systems. So, we've learned quite a bit about cache memory, but why does it matter to us? Well, the importance of cache memory cannot be overstated. It's like the bridge that narrows the gap between the high-speed CPU and the slower main memory, ensuring that your computer's performance stays smooth and efficient. The ingenious multi-level cache design with L1, L2, and L3 cache ensures data is always readily available for the CPU, reducing the time taken to access frequently used data. Despite the trade-offs, including the cost and limited space, cache memory is a worthy investment for the substantial performance boost it provides. Even as we advance technologically, the principles of cache memory remain relevant, extending beyond local computers to servers and large-scale data centers. It's a testament to the profound influence of this small yet crucial component in our computing systems. In the end, cache memory might be a small component, but its impact on our daily digital lives is anything but small. It's a testament to the complex and ingenious designs behind our modern computing systems. The first rule of channel is subscribe channel. Second rule of channel is click like. This channel will make you smart.